How's it going everyone, Michael here. So today I'm gonna go over yet again another algorithm problem called link list in binary tree. This problem is really useful to learn because it involves so many different topics. Obviously link lists and binary trees, but then there's also depth first search, breadth first search, pre-order traversal, all of that in one single problem. Also, this problem has multiple ways to solve it, so I'm gonna be going over two out of the four ways in this video. If you aren't already subscribed, you should definitely consider doing so. I actually just invested some money into getting better YouTube equipment, so the next videos that come out are probably gonna be a lot better in quality. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So for this problem, we are given the root of a binary tree and the head of a linked list. So our binary tree may look like this and our linked list may look like this. We must return true or false if the linked list starting from the head maps to some downward path in the binary tree. So in this example, we would return true since the link list 2, 3 is present in the binary tree here and here. However, if our link list was 1, 3, we would return false as there is no downward path of 1, 3 in our tree. Pretty simple to understand, but how do we solve this problem? So we have the option to take a couple different approaches. The first approach is to do a depth first search and then a nested breadth first search. The second approach is to do a depth first search and then a nested depth first search. The third approach, a breadth first search and nested breadth first search. And then the fourth approach is just to do DP. For this video, I will be going over approaches one and two. Approach three, the BFS plus BFS, involves a lot more extra code, so it's not really viable. And then the fourth approach, DP, is just a lot more difficult than the other approaches, which maybe I'll make another video going over that approach eventually, but for now, just approach one and two. First, we're gonna go over the DFS plus BFS approach. So our input will be the same as before. The head of our linked list has a two. So we know the start of our BFS will need to happen at any place in our binary tree that has a two, since we need to see if the link list occurs in a downward path. In order to find all of the twos in our binary tree, we can perform a pre-order traversal, which is one type of DFS. And just to refresh your memory, a pre-order traversal, we visit the node, go left, and then go right. So right now, if we look at our root, that is not two. So we immediately go left, and our left node is a two, which means we need to compute a BFS starting from this node. So in a BFS, we always use a queue, so we're going to initialize that structure and add the two node to it. Now that we have done that, we will check each child node of every node we DQ and see if it matches the next node in our linked list, which would be the number three. We DQ the node in our queue, the left of node two is five, which is not three, so we ignore it. The right of node two is null, so we don't do anything. Now our queue is empty, but we still haven't found a three below node two, so we know this path does not have the link list. Then we go left again because remember, we are still inside of our pre-order traversal and we are looking for our head node two again. Five is not equal to two, so we try going left, but that is null. So we just return false from that recursive call. Our right child is also null, so we return false there. And now from node five, we have exhausted all searches below. So what we're gonna say is, give me the result between the left child or the right child. So what this is, is false or false, which is just false. So we're gonna return false to node two. What this false value is saying is that at this path, we did not find the link list. So now from node two, we're gonna go right, which is null, so we return false. Once again, we say false or false, which equals false, and then we return that to node one. Now we check the right node from node one, and it has a value of two, so we start a BFS from this position. We're gonna add two to our queue and have our pointer set to three in our link list since that is what we are looking for. When we DQ the value two, the left and right child are both values of three. So we add both nodes to the queue. Now we move our pointer forward in our link list. Since we are at the end, 
we can immediately return true. We found a path with the linked list. So from node two, we're gonna return true. At our root now, we do false or true, which evaluates to true, meaning we found a path. Now let's look at the DFS plus DFS solution, which is a bit easier to understand in my opinion. The only parts of the algorithm that are different from the previous approach is when we find the head of our linked list and search for the rest of it. So starting from the two on the left side, instead of performing a BFS, we're gonna do a DFS. So we check if the left node has a value of three, since that is the next node in our linked list. It doesn't, so we return false to node two. Then we check our right node, which is null, so we return false as well. And the same steps as before, we do false or false, which is false, so we return that to node two. Now skipping over to the other two on the right side, we're gonna perform another DFS. We check if the left child has a value of three, it does, so we go and visit it. Now we move our linked list pointer forward, which is pointing to null at this point, which means we found the full linked list path. From node three, we return true to node two. Now we check the right child of node two, and that also has a value of three. So we're going to visit it. Once again, the linked list pointer moves to the very end, null, so we return true from this node as well. Back at node two, we do true or true, which equals true, and this is saying that we found the linked list path in both subtrees starting at node two. We return true from node two and from node one, we do false or true, which equals true, and this is the same result as our DFS plus BFS approach. All right, so let's go over the code for both of these approaches. We're gonna start out with the DFS plus BFS approach. We are given two classes, list node and tree node. Those are pretty standard. The tree node has a left and right child and then our list node has a next child. And so in our function, we are given a list node head and a tree node root. And then we just need to return true or false if the linked list exists in the binary tree or not. So we know we have to implement a BFS and DFS. So what we can do is we can just create two functions here. We'll say private Boolean DFS, and we're gonna pass in both our list node and our tree node. So we'll say list node head, tree node root. And then we're also gonna have a BFS. So BFS list node, head, tree node, root. And from our is subpath function, we're going to call our DFS because remember our DFS is what's going to perform the pre-order traversal for us. So we can say return DFS of head and root. And now in our DFS, we just have to implement the pre-order traversal, which is pretty simple. In a pre-order traversal, we visit the node, then go left, then go right. So we wanna check if our root node is null first, because if it's null, then we don't wanna make any recursive calls on it. So we'll say if root equals null, return false. And now this is where it kinda of gets interesting. So if we make it past this initial base case, this is where we're going to check if our root node value is equal to our head node value. And if it is, that means we need to start a BFS from the current position. So we can say if our head.val is equal to root.val and if our BFS, we're gonna call BFS inside of this if statement and we're gonna pass in our head and root and if that evaluates to true, then we return true in our DFS function. So we know if we are calling the BFS function, the head and the root must have the same value. And that's because of this initial check here. We do not want to call this BFS if they do not have the same values. And now all we need to do is visit the left and right child. So we can say return DFS of head root dot left or DFS of head of root dot right. So as you can see, just like a normal pre-order traversal, we check the left node and check the right node. So just like how we went over in the examples, 
when we did like false or false, true or false, this is what line 34 is doing. So if either recursive call returns true, then the entire function is going to return true. And now we just need to implement a BFS. So we're going to initialize a queue and it's going to have tree nodes inside of it. And then we're going to add the root inside of our queue, queue.add root. And then we're also going to move our list node forward because we already found the head on line 33. So all we need to do is we could say list node cur equals head.next. So now moving forward as we are going through and doing the BFS, we're going to check if the current value is equal to this cur list node. And now we can say while our queue is not empty and cur is not equal to null, because if cur is equal to null, then we know that we for sure found a linked list inside of our binary tree. So if we make it out of this while loop, we can just say return if cur is equal to null. If cur is null, then we know for sure we found the linked list. And now back in here, we're going to get the size of our queue. We'll say queue.size. And then we're going to loop over that amount. And here we're going to start dequeuing. So we'll say tree node node equals queue.pull. And now we just need to check the left and right child of this node. So we can say if node.left is not equal to null and node.left.val, if it's equal to cur.val, then that means we found a node and we can add that to our queue. So we could say queue.add node.left. And we're going to do pretty much the same exact logic for the right side. So we'll say if node.right is not equal to null and node.right.val equals cur.val, then we say queue.add node.right. And then when we come out of this for loop, that means we have exhausted pulling all of the nodes in our queue. We can say if our queue is not empty, that means that we need to move our cur node forward. So we'll say cur equals cur.next. So that is it for this approach, but let's make sure it works. Okay, so let's go over the DFS plus DFS approach now. Just like before, we're going to have a DFS function, and this is going to perform our pre-order traversal. So we'll say if our root is null, return false. If we make it outside of this statement, this is where we're going to actually check if there's a linked list inside of our binary tree. So we're going to call another DFS function, and we can just call it matches. So if it matches, we're going to pass our head and our root then we return true. And then we check our left and right node just like before. So we say DFS head root dot left or DFS head root dot right. And now we need to implement this matches function. So we can say private Boolean matches list node head tree node root. So let's think about what our base cases are in this second DFS function. We are trying to go down in our binary tree and see if all of the nodes match in our linked list. So if our head becomes null, that means we have found every single node in that linked list, and that means we return true. So we'll say if our head equals null, return true. If that is not true, then we're going to say if our root is equal to null or the root value is not equal to the head value, then we can return false immediately. And this makes a lot of sense because imagine we pass in a linked list with the value 1, 2, and then our root is 5. It would go 
to this check here, and obviously the root value would not be equal to the head value, so we'd immediately return false. There's no way that this link list is in that subtree. And now we're gonna call this matches function recursively on the left and right child. So we could say return matches of head.next and root.left, or matches of head.next and root.right. So I'm sure you might be wondering, why do we do head.next? If we make it past line 39, head.val is for sure equal to root.val. And what that means is we need to start moving forward the pointer in our list node. And it doesn't matter whether we call the left or right child first. We could, we could swap these recursive calls. It wouldn't make any difference. We just want to know if either or results in a match. So that is actually it for this approach. Let's submit again. And there we go. It's actually a lot faster than the BFS approach. So the time complexity of both of these solutions are going to be big O of N times the minimum between L and H. So I know that sounds confusing. N is the number of nodes that we have in our binary tree. L is the length of our link list and H is the depth of our tree. So in either solution, we will definitely have to touch every single node in the binary tree in order to determine if the linked list is inside of it. And as we are traversing, as we are doing this pre-order traversal, for every single node, we have to check if the linked list starts at that node. So in the worst case, we will exhaust the height of our tree or the linked list for every single node in the tree. The space complexity of our solution is going to be big O of H, where H is the depth of our tree. In the worst case, we're going to have to make H recursive calls in our pre-order traversal. In our BFS approach, we also have to initialize the Q data structure. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope this was helpful going over all of these different algorithms and data structures. There is a DP approach to this problem. So if you guys want me to go over that approach as well, feel free to make a comment. And if there are enough people that want it, I will definitely do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to join my private Discord channel, you can support me on Patreon. And with that, I will see you guys next time.